I have a very special couple and they are doctors and when they finish their medicine, they decided not to go to America, but they decided to go to a remote corner in Azam and they have started a hospital called the Matunda Hospital, a Christian hospital for leprosy and a general hospital. They were honored for the Lifetime Achievement Award by Christian Medical College, Velo. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a life of true sacrifice where people have just given their life for God, going all the way to Makunda Azam to hear more about him. Can we put our hands together for Dr. Vijay and Dr. Anne? Greetings from Azam. A glimpse of our 350 acre campus. This is the story of how God worked through two ordinary people who accepted God's invitation to join him in a journey of faith. Shortly after we were married, we visited this hospital close for the last uh, previous 10 years in a remote rural part of Assam, close to the borders with Mizoram and Tripura. Completely closed and uh, in dilapidated condition. Today, the same hospital sees over 100,000 outpatients. <laughs> 14,000 inpatients. 3,000 major surgeries and 6,000 deliveries. It is well equipped and able to provide high quality health care to the poor. We soon realized that local tribal people could not progress in life because they did not have a school. In 2004, an English medium school was started which has today over a thousand children up to class 12. <laughs> Many remote communities in Northeast India are unable to have health care and we wanted to train nurse missionaries. In 2006, we started a nursing school which today is being upgraded to a college of nursing. We thank the Ferris Foundation in the Netherlands which has made this building possible. In 2005, Tripura was militant infested. Nobody wanted to work there. Healthcare was at a standstill. We purchased a piece of land in one of the most militant infested districts and started a branch hospital there. It was, it was the only Christian mission hospital in that state at that time. We also are very much involved in documenting of biodiversity and in the running of a large agricultural and fishery department. We should look at the world of the poor. This poor lady has decided not to get this large tumor treated because it would push her family into destitution. We were able to remove this tumor. It weighed 35 kilograms. But she probably died because the biopsy was advanced cancer. Poor people come late for treatment, often too late to be saved. They die of easily treatable conditions in the prime of their youth. It is our Christian mandate to care for these people. When we do so, God will pay their bills and our institutions will thrive. Poor people come with what they have. In spite of not having rich patients or even private wards, Makunda today has an annual income of rupees 20 crore, about three million dollars. We are able to give rupees three crore as charity to people whom we think are vulnerable and still have one crore for development. Only one percent of this income comes from external sources and most of that from the government of Assam. In 2016, I was a mentor at the Global Surgical Hackathon at Uganda 
where I presented our business model and I was told by people from the Wharton School, uh, from the Harvard Business School that I should not talk about myself and uh, should be evaluated by someone else. So we invited a group of final year MBA students from the Wharton School of Business and they took our hospital as a spring 2019 project. They have published it and it is called the Makunda model, a study of high quality accessible healthcare in low resource settings. And this year we are going to do two more projects with them. So these are some of the strategies that enabled this model to succeed. I will not go into the details. It, this is available online. So uh, being poor friendly means that we need to be happy with less. So in early days, we had no electricity and running water in our homes. And that situation continued for 14 years. I was trained as a surgeon, but I operated without cautery machines. My wife had done her MD in general uh, in anesthesia, and she did gave anesthesia with that machine, which, did, which we did not have money for a boils. So we need to adapt to the situations that we encounter. We refused to give bribes and show favoritism, and this led to delays. But today, Makunda is known for its strong stand on these issues. So that is my wife that, and with my elder daughter on her back. And that is a tracheoesophageal fistula, which has been operated, a newborn baby with no connection between the esophagus and trachea. And this baby had to be ventilated for four days and we didn't have a ventilator. So for many years, these babies were ventilated by hand, by Anne, for four days. And this baby... <laughs> this baby today is a big girl. And this is what I wanted to say. This is the words that guided me. I wanted to, I joined an engineering college but had to leave because of ragging. I joined, I wanted to be a cardiologist, but God told me through this verse that he had better plans and that I should move to a place where there was a great need. Anne was challenged by this verse, who will go for me? Our early days at Makunda were difficult, no money, no running water, no electricity. The transformation of the hospital and its departments are a testimony to God's faithfulness and the hard work of many highly committed staff. Mission hospitals are God's answer to the poor in places where high out-of-pocket expenses drive many to destitution. We gave a 30-year commitment to serve at this hospital and today we have completed 27 of those years. God enabled us to see his vision through his eyes. He took us by our hands and led us one step at a time. He was the source of all wisdom and strength and encouragement. We have many partnerships and collaborations today. This is with the Royal Dutch Tropical Institute in Amsterdam. Four residents from this institute come to our hospital every six months to complete the MD in Global Health and Tropical Medicine and then go on to serve in some of the most needy parts of the world. These are some other partnerships and collaborations. The hospital also received the entry level accreditation from the National Accreditation Board for Hospitals and Healthcare Institutions. We are thankful to God that He has allowed us to see all this happen before our eyes and in our lifetime. In 2016, Anne and me were privileged to receive the Paul Harrison Award by our postgraduate alma mater, CMC Valor. This award is given for alumni for lifetime achievement. We were reminded that we should strive for an even greater award that no institution in this world can give. <laughs> to be welcomed back as good and faithful servants who have fulfilled his will for our lives through trust and obedience. And that is our ambition. In 2008, I suffered a heart attack and the drug that was to be given was not available in our hospital. By the time I received it, 
it was too late and I now live with an ejection fraction of only 35%. Through this experience, I learned to appreciate the wildlife in and around our campus. Today, I have the number one position in the number of observations from India in iNaturalist. I have also published many articles and short uh, chapters. I have learned this at a late age. Our brains are capable of learning even when we become old. And God uses advance, adverse situations to guide us to take new directions as we trust Him. Old dogs can still be taught new tricks. <laughs> These are some of my photographs. So we would like to suggest to all of you that our lives will soon be over and only what we have done for our Lord will remain in our accounts in heaven. Let us not waste our time in pursuit of that which has no eternal value, but seek God's directions and fulfill His plans for our lives. We will be rewarded with peace and contentment in this world and eternal riches in heaven. Are we willing to take the road less traveled? The cries of desperate people have been heard by God from many parts of our country, Jharkhand and Chhattisgarh and other places, from Africa, Democratic Republic of Congo, South America, he is asking, who will go for me? Who will go for me? Our time, talents and treasure should be laid at the Master's feet. We must become willing and living sacrifices to li live life to the full. The greatest gift that God has given us in this world is each other. When we consider marriage, we are often distracted by emotion, by external appearances, worldly status, riches and accomplishments. But God's spirit in a person shines through when we consider the godly choices they make. We must look for God's control in the lives of those we seek to marry as this will enable the family to withstand great trials. Through our journey of faith, we have been strengthened by verses and songs and Anne will now share a few of them. We acknowledge our God, without whom this journey would not have been possible. We also thank God for the large number of highly committed staff who work joyfully with us in spite of severe constraints. We are grateful to our daughters, Hannah and Debra, who are with us today for sharing in the joys and difficulties of missionary life with us. Christian missionary life is not filled with comfort and ease. We are constantly buffeted with fear, doubts, discouragement, pain. However, during these times, we forget God is by our side. 2000 to 2005 were the years of greatest trial for us. When our earthly wisdom told us it was futile to continue, God sent a group of nuns from South India, whom we had not known earlier, come, visit us, and encourage us. These verses from Ezekiel were told to us in April 2003, a prophecy. God knew we needed the assurance. He wanted us to continue and he did it by sending them. We were reminded that he cares for us. He is aware of what we go through and what we need. He is Bir Laharoi. This land which is desolate, will be rebuilt, fortified, and inhabited. The nations around you will know that I, the Lord, have rebuilt. We learned that it is he who is going to accomplish. Missionary life is a call for perseverance, endurance, and when God takes us through trials, tests, and tribulations, helplessness, hopelessness, doubts, despair, creeping, God taught us a valuable lesson through this passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 8, 9, and 17 and 18. He told us, refuse to be overcome by circumstances. Renew your thoughts and respond by faith. Yes, we renewed our thoughts. We knew that we are pressed on all sides, but not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are struck down but not destroyed. We are persecuted and not abandoned. We are also reminded that all these things are momentary and we are reminded 
to keep in mind the eternal glory and asked god asked us fix your eyes on what is unseen and fix your eyes on me psalm 118:22 to 23 the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone the lord has done this and this is marvelous in our eyes this promise was given to us in 2001 january prophecy about rebuilding the ruined hospital was told to us in 2003 it has taken more than 15 years for this to be fulfilled this has led us to totally depend on god we as a family can testify that lord has done this we have learned not to question his timing and the character or intensity of these trials because they are given by the master who is always with us holding our hands the last part of the prophecy this is what the lord says once again i will eat to israel's plea and do this for them i will make them their people as numerous as sea the cities they were lying in ruins desolate and destroyed are now fortified and inhabited this is marvelous in our eyes i would like to end our story by singing the song his eyes on the sparrow these were there were times when i couldn't pray or read the bible i kept singing the song again and again to lift my spirit as well as vijay's and trust in him who sent us and said lo i am with you always why should i feel discouraged why should the shadows come why should my heart be lonely and long for him and hope when jesus is my portion my god stand friend to see his eye is on the sparrow and i know he watches me his eye is on the sparrow and i know he watches me i sing because i'm happy i sing because i'm free for his eye is on the sparrow and i know he watches me let not your heart be troubled his tender word i hear and resting on his goodness i clear my doubts and fears though by the path he lead us but one step i may see his eye is on the sparrow and i know he watches me his eye is on the sparrow and i know he watches me i sing because i'm happy i sing because i'm free for his eye is on the sparrow and i know he watches me whenever i am tempted whenever doubts arise when songs give place to sighing when hope within me dies i draw the closer to him from cares he sets me free his eye is on the sparrow and i know he watches me his eye is on the sparrow and i know he watches me i sing because i'm happy i sing because i'm free for his eye is on the sparrow and i know he watches me thank you
Dr. Vijay, Dr. Ryan, a standing ovation. We're so overwhelmed about your story. Two of them go to a hospital in Matunda, which is closed for 10 years. And you saw that picture, right? What it has transformed and what it takes to him. You know, I'm sure all of you are in tears, as they are. And what an inspiration for all of us today that we need to take the road lesser travel for our God. Can we give them once more a wonderful round of applause? I'm going to ask Sajan and Nancy to come up on stage and going to give present them with this beautiful caricature. It's got this lovely picture of the couple together. And guess what it is written? It is written, Good Samaritans. Can we put our hands together once again? Truly they are the Good Samaritans. God bless you, Dr. Vijay. God bless you, Dr. Anne.